It's Keen and Somewhere Only We Know. Now then, keep your messages coming. A little something for the jar tonight, the jar of hearts. Something that's cheered you up. 81333. Start your message, Georgie. Tell me all about it and I'll slip it in the old gherkin jar. Now, from one man making a pilgrimage on his bike from Canterbury to Rome to another who's also making a historical journey back in time. Daniel Williams is a DJ from Sutton Coalfield and uh, fascinated by the history of King Charles I that he has decided to travel around the country dressed up as him. And I think he makes a very pretty sight. Evening, Daniel. Hello, Georgie. So why on earth are you doing this? Well, um, personally, I felt like the history of King Charles I wasn't given, well, wasn't being given a, a big enough platform. And um, I, I used to like learning about the Tudors, I mean, King Henry VIII. And there's a lot more of the history known than actually King Charles is. So... I suddenly hit upon this idea, it'd be quite, quite fantastic to dress up as him and to bring him to life for people and spread his history, basically. Right, so describe the outfit to me, Daniel. What are you, what are you roaming around the country looking like? Well, it can vary, basically, because um, a lot of these portraits that are on display at the Royal Academy at the moment uh, give us an indication of the kind of thing he used to wear. And so a lot of them are based on what he wore back in his time. And uh, so they can go from everything, from something very regal to a travelling look, which he used to, like, alter his look, I suppose, everywhere he went. So what's the travelling look, then? Have you got a cape? That's right, yeah. Boots? Um, I'm going to Scotland in two weeks' time, and yeah. so that'll be part of a feature up there, because um, I'm taking him to Dunfermline Palace, where he was born. Right. And then to Stirling Castle. But, um, the nature of things and the way they're going now is people are contacting me and saying, did you know Charles actually visited our area? And so it's encouraging me to, to bring him to different areas, which is good, um, which when, is what I wanted. When do you do this? Do you do this at the weekends? Are you doing this during the week? It can vary, really, I suppose, because um, obviously I want a um, chance for the general public to see it happening because I used to get a buzz myself from going to um, castles and seeing people dressed up and bringing history to life, basically, because... When it's just in a textbook, it's good to read, obviously, but it doesn't hit, hit a nerve, it doesn't bring anything to life for people, and by bringing it to life, it becomes more interesting and creates more questions. And I suppose when you get to these places, people are going to stop you and say, you know, what do you do? And then do you then tell them a bit about why you're there, why Charles I was there? That's right, yeah, and, um, and, and it's amazing when they learn things. I mean, when I did the uh, Midlands Today uh, programme with Ben, um, we went up to King's Standing, and there's a mound that used to be there that King Charles stood on and addressed his troops. And a lot of people don't know that the name King's Standing is associated with King Charles I. And so when we went up there, we had a bit of fun asking the general public if they knew. And um, it was amazing, really. Um, one guy hit, hit it straight on the head and um, blew me away, really, because you know I was convinced that nobody knew because... Um, even myself, I didn't know until I started to learn more. Ah, yeah, right. So, so it's now I'm passing on my knowledge, you could yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a journey in every sense of the word, isn't it? Are you going to end up in the Isle of Wight? Because wasn't he imprisoned there for a while? That's right. That was my first um, one of my first encounters oh, with, was it? with King Charles I. I didn't get to know about him. And so my mind was like, well, why would a king spend time in a castle being kept there? And then I went backwards in history from that. Yeah. And then find out there's a monument in Portsmouth that's got his bust on, which uh, commemorates his journey back from Spain. And, and I was like, well, what was he doing in Spain? And so I found out about that. And he was looking for, a, was it, was he for a wife at one point in Spain. And he, he, he came through France and picked up um, a wife in France, didn't he? Well, what it was, he went to Spain to go and woo um, a Spanish infanta, they called yes, her. Yes, yeah. And to me, it would make an epic film. I can't understand why they've never hit upon, you know, all that story because, mm. you know, there's more to, to what we know. Yeah. Well, look, it's been wonderful talking to you. Will you will you go to Spain and France or is it just England that you're sticking to? Great point. I've already researched that, you know. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd, be, I'd absolutely love to, but for the Spanish locals... Yeah. It would be quite intriguing, I think. I yeah. think they would definitely think I'm a yeah. musketeer. <laughs> <laughs> well, which one would you be? Athos, Porthos, Aramis or D'Artagnan? <sighs> definitely the latter. Yeah. Be, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, thanks so much. 
Thank you so much as well. Cheers. No, Have really good, good to talk to you. And you, my dear, Daniel Williams, a.k.a. King Charles I. What a journey. I'm loving that. And he's all kitted up in the, you know, wig and, wig and beard and tash. Lovely. Watching.